coming up. My studio's getting a makeover. I review Mikaton's magnet driver. Stanley's a TV star. The website gets a rebrand. And we've got some stickers. Hello there and welcome along to the spring vlog. I'm not in the workshop for this edition because I wanted to show you what's happening here. January is my downtime. I usually take time out to switch off, reflect and generally decide on what direction my life is going to take. So although nothing constructive has happened in the first six weeks or so of this year, a lot of plans were made. In fact, I don't really know where to begin, but this is one of them. This is, or was, my studio. Since I finished work in September last year, my studio has become, well, dormant. I mainly used it as an office for my business, for storage and for preparing materials for my talks, workshops and exhibitions. All that has changed now. So my studio is getting a complete makeover and it will be the new hub for my 8x6 adventures. As you can see, apart from the big cabinets, it's completely bare. The carpet's gone, the walls have been stripped. I've just got stuck in. There's still a lot of work to do yet. There's plastering, woodwork, decorating and a new carpet to fit. There will be some studio projects coming along as well. A video editing station, a purpose-built photographic table, improved lighting, some storage, there's lots to do. While I've been enjoying my downtime, Stanley has been up to his antics, which came to the attention of our regional television station, that's Lancashire. One dull and cloudy morning, I got a call from the That's Lancashire News team wanting to visit and do an interview about Stanley for their programme. The next day, there was a knock at the door and standing there in the flesh was reporter Jessica Hay. Jessica Hay in the flesh on my doorstep. Well, I'll leave a link to the news item if you want to take a look at Stanley's appearance. So now Stanley's a TV star, he wants a dressing room all to himself. Now last month I was contacted by Mikaton, the makers of the Magnet Driver. They wanted to know if I would review one of their kits for them. I immediately said yes, but it would have to be an honest review of my findings, good or bad. They were happy with this and gave me the go-ahead. So here are my thoughts on the magnet driver. Screwing has never been so easy, so I'll have to give it a go. They sent me their number 17 kit, which contains 10 different bits five magnetic collars of various sizes and a nail holder which fits their handle which they've also included for this review. The kit is colour coded so even stupid people can use it. So I'm going to mount the orange kit which is the PosiDrag 2. So it's the orange collar, the orange bit. I'm just going to mount that into my drill. and the screw fits on and then you push the collar up to touch the screw like that right so let's just drive this straight into the wood and see what we get No messing, nice and um, below the surface. So how can this allow the screw to go below the surface? Well, what's happening is as I'm drilling this into the wood, this cap actually pulls out of the way. There's enough flex in this rubber column here to allow it to sink the screw below the surface. 
The magnet driver does indeed hold screws firm and true. The screws click into place and stay put, which means that on multiple driving, it's going to save you a lot of hassle and a lot of time. But one question I want an answer to is how well will these bits stand up to serious abuse? It's time for the beast. And let's see how this handles. So if you're out and you're building a big framework, these bits will last. Let's have a close up of that shall we? Let's get this cap off and have a look. That isn't bad at all. I've just given that some serious abuse and yeah he's just taking the coating off. Just taking the black coating off. But these bits are pretty tough. I mean to have a thousand watts of drill driving a screw into a piece of wood that's not pre-drilled, just whack it in there over and over and over again. And yeah, that is a pretty decent piece of material there. Pretty decent piece of material. So what about this nail holder? Mikaton boasts in their promotional video it will hold a wide range of nail sizes and even staples. This is a 50mm pin. As with the magnet driver, it uses a collar to hold the nail in place. But just how small can you go? I use a lot of these 5 8 veneer pins in some of my projects. And I usually use my long nose pliers to hold them. So can the holder cope with something so small? Well, I am impressed. So, to sum up, they hold the screws as well as they say they will. The bits stand up to a lot of abuse. They can be used with their own handle. And the collars will also fit existing drivers. Kits range from £20 to just over £47 on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description if you want to investigate further. Are they worth it? Well, they're a quality piece of kit and do exactly what they say they do. I wouldn't mind one of these on my wish list, that's for sure. The case is also extremely strong too. Um, hopefully. It's an impressive piece of kit and I will be using the driver in a couple of build videos coming up soon to see how it fares out in the field so to speak. So keep an eye out for those if this is something you're interested in. All the plans were hatched early this year as well to complement the studio refit and one of those involves a rebranding of my website. Since my retirement my web presence has changed and is now the 8x6 workshop. The website will showcase all of my work not just projects from the workshop, but my sculpting, my metalworking, artwork and all the other creations. 
all aspects of my creativity will be encompassed under the 8x6 brand. As things develop through the year, a lot of my work will be for sale. So this will be available through the website. So I designed it to be more visual with this in mind. The design of the website is kept clean and simple, with navigation being achieved with just six options across the top. The main feature is the gallery. This option presents you with an active pictorial menu and hovering over the images highlights your choice. If we choose an item, we are presented with a series of images where we can explore in more detail. There will be at least four to choose from and these are reproduced in high definition in the main window. Moving around on this window will allow you to get a good close-up view. A short showcase video will nearly always be available. And if the item was featured as a build project in the 8x6 workshop, a link to that project video will also be there. If the item's still up for sale, there'll be an option as well to purchase it. The blog option will go into greater detail than the video vlogs and you will have the opportunity to watch the related episode. All of the 8x6 project videos will be accessible through this projects page. Newer episodes will also have more information and additional images that are not possible to include in the original video due to time constraints. There's also a little information about me. I think we'll skip over that one. And finally, there's a contact form where you can get in touch if you so wish. The website's live now and I'll put a link in the description so do go along and have a look and tell me what you think. The stickers are still coming in and I still have some of mine left so if you would like one or you'd like to do a sticker exchange contact details are in the description to this video. So let's take a look and see uh, what, uh, what's come in the post. Really chuffed to swap stickers with Harry Watts. I ran into Harry at a demo at Axminster Tools when I was thinking about starting a YouTube channel. He gave me so much advice we both missed most of the demonstration so I'm very indebted to Harry for pointing me in the right direction. Wildman's tech features the work of Marsh Wildman who reclaims and upcycles whenever possible. Not strictly a woodworking channel, but a good browse through his videos can be very enlightening. Stuart Farini is a wood turner that plays and experiments with colour. He uses all sorts of materials as masks and stencils to achieve some amazing colourful effects. I first came across Ellen's channel when I was researching for a fabric project. She covers a variety of subjects and her channel has become popular in just over a year. Shane's hobby shop covers practical builds, hints and tips, tool reviews and he also takes part in lots of the YouTube challenges. I'm honoured to have a sticker of his on my panel. Steve is a relative newcomer to YouTube but he's finding his feet fast and at the moment he's experimenting with some steampunk style lighting. Mm -hmm. 
Also new to YouTube is From Out of the Woods. Claire has a few videos under her belt already, but the quality of her work is fantastic. Well worth a watch while you have your brew. Andy Pugh is a tinkerer. He likes to build things, fix things, repurpose things and generally tinker around in his small workshop. He uses anything to hand so take a wander over there and see what he's up to. I also received a sticker from Norman McLaren from Rossendale here in the UK. Norman doesn't have a YouTube channel or a web presence so I couldn't really include him in the shout outs but I just want to say thank you for your sticker Norman it's going up in my workshop with all the others so thanks for following along with the 8x6 adventures much appreciated. Thanks are in order also to Phil Cannon from Phil Cannon's Woodturning. A while ago he posted some images on Facebook of his hardwood hole and I happened to leave a comment saying I was very envious of the chunks of walnut he'd managed to acquire. Then this arrived in the post. Phil has sent me a lovely piece of walnut. Very kind of you Phil, thanks for that. I have a use for this already in mind so you'll be seeing this again soon so thanks very much for that Phil. So what else is coming up from the 8x6 workshop? Well I have a wood turning special in production as I speak. It's a segmented bowl but it has an amazing story to it. You won't have to wait long for that one, that's, uh, that's coming along very soon. I have a series of really unusual projects on the go right now and there will also be some build projects for the new studio as it comes along. Stanley becomes a ninja in his next episode. There's a lot of animation in that one so I don't have a release date just yet. A lot depends on the weather. So until next time, jobs are good in. <laughs>